Hi, this is Priyanka Chopra and you are watching Channel Y. The biggest South Asian media group, Y Media. Y Media. Y media group established in 2001 is a media company with a 360 degree approach in reaching our audience over five platforms television radio newspaper online news portal and mobile app why media has newspaper midweek radio south asian Pop. hi i'm amitabh bachchan and you're listening to south asian Pop. hi this is amir khan and you're listening to south asian Pop. All English 24 7 television network and Y Media Plus. You are watching Channel Y. Channel Y. Prime Minister, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be back. Y Media is the official media partner for TIFF 2022. It's so exciting to be here. Exclusive show all about the Toronto International Auto Show. So Cam's going to tell us more about uh, the amazing vehicle behind us right now. You can see the Devel 16. Hi, I'm Ria Khan, and on behalf of Y Media, welcome to Channel Y. One Y Media Group welcomes you to Channel Y once again. Channel Y ke entertainment special sure. made jahan. SouthAsianDaily.com, the biggest South Asian media group. Why media? Hello, everyone. My name is Yudhir Jaswal. I'm the group editor at Why Media. Today, we have a very special guest here in the studios. His name is Ken Mehu, and he is the CEO of Film Ostler Foundation. Ken, a very warm welcome on behalf of Why Media. How are you, sir? I'm very well. Thank you very much for having me. You are very welcome. It's a pleasure to know you, Ken, personally as well. But I must compliment the great work you're doing for the community in terms of healthcare, fundraising activities, and you've been featured uh, in a book right now. We'll talk about that later on as well. But congrats, compliments for all the great work that you've done. Well, thank you. It's work that we do together. You certainly play a big part in your community as well, and I'm honored to do my, my part for healthcare in our communities. Thank you. Ken, I want to know the person behind this yeah. ho whole persona. So tell us something about you. Where were you born? Where did you do your schooling from? Sure. So I was uh, born in Peel. I was actually uh, just down Highway 10 here in Mississauga. I was born and grew up in, uh, in different parts of, of, of Toronto, but I, my schooling essentially was in Port Credit in Mississauga. And uh, I was always very involved, very involved in my high school, in my community. I came from one of those families that's always doing one thing or another, and that's sort of the way that I was brought up. So I've been involved in my community, either athletics or something. I, I, I helped with a food bank when I was 14 years old. It's always been a part of the, the sort of the fabric of my life. Great. And tell us about your uh, college. Uh, I went to the University of Toronto. So I was interested in, and am interested in global events and politics and things that matter. And similarly there, I always did things that involved community mobilization and activation and um, big causes. I've always had an interest in making a difference and having an impact. Uh, and then I think in my own small way, that's what I do. Great. And uh, after graduating, then uh, take us through your career. Well, my career is pretty simple. Um, I decided fairly early on, as I said, that I wanted to do something that would help others. You know, I think there's a lot of things in life that are pretty challenging. These can be challenging times. So to work with people for a common greater good who care about helping their neighbor, maybe it's 
checking in on them during the pandemic. Maybe it's shoveling a driveway or maybe it's raising funds for a worthy cause. I've kind of always been involved with that. And so I did a little bit of time in the financial industry and then fairly quickly I got into this whole idea of, of fundraising, of raising funds for worthy causes. So in Canada, there are something like 170,000, 170,000 different charities and nonprofits and they all have such important work that they do. It could be Big Brothers, Big Sisters. It could be the Save a Food Bank. But, you know, altogether they make Canada a large part of why it's such a great nation. And I just decided that I wanted to do something to help those organizations because they can't do what they need to do without the money that they need to do it. You would know many worthy causes, and they're all sort of, it's a little bit competitive. So I started... Um, with a multiple sclerosis society of Canada who help people who live with multiple sclerosis. And I did that for a long time, starting at a very junior level and then raising up to be an executive. And then after that, I had the opportunity to give back and work back in the community where I was raised, which is Peel. And I came from there to the William Moser Health System Foundation. And it's a pretty simple story. It's, that's how I did it. It's an amazing story. And that was the reason that uh, you were featured in a book as well, uh, co-authored by Peter Mansbridge, who doesn't know him. And he picked up uh, all these people who really, you know, the book says, how Canada works. Yes, the foundation of Canada, we all say, actually I say this pretty often on my radio, TV, Canada is the most beautiful country in this world. It's an amazing place, which we have made a home. But how does it work? That's what this book is all about. And uh, to take us through, Yes, uh, I also want to highlight at this point, here is the book, and uh, it's an amazing book, please do check out uh, if you want to. I'm sure you will be inspired to read all these amazing stories. So tell us about the book first, and then we'll see how did they contact you, and how was the experience with Peter Mansfield, we'll talk about that, but tell us about the book first. Sure, well the book as you introduced it so beautifully is the story uh, first of all, of Peter Mansbridge and how he came to do the job that he did, which is he was a leading journalist in Canada, a legendary journalist for over 20 years, but no professional journalist background. He liked to do things similarly that helped others, and he was uh, in, a, in an airport, and somebody said, you should consider, you have a special voice, you should consider doing something like this. And it tells his own story about how that came to be. And then, as, as you said, he talks about ordinary Canadians who stumbled into something that matters greatly to them. And for one person, it's being, you know, someone who is a, who is a, a coach for someone else. It, it, you lead a local community organization for someone else that might be a chef. Um, but they're all people who, in their stories, have been able to have impact. And he tells the stories of, just as we just did, how that came to be what the impact of it is. And what I really like about the book and appreciate the book is, is no, there's no ego. These are just like the person who lives next door to you who does something that they care about a lot. And he tells that story because he thinks, as you said, it's something people don't think about it. You just, people just do it and you don't know who is behind, who, who is the farmer, who is maybe the person who helps you in a difficult time in your life you don't get to know those stories. So he wanted to let you know about the stories behind how Canada functions, you know? That's the whole idea of the book. Here I definitely envy you wow. in the sense that uh, I've been to CBC studios on TV, on radio many times, uh, but never got a chance to meet Peter Mansbridge. Uh, definitely a living legend, the national at CBC, one-on-one -on -one with Peter Mansbridge, so many amazing things that he has done. So you got a chance to meet him. He, he did a chapter on you. Take us through that experience. Well, the, the majority of the work I actually got to do with his, with his uh, co-writer, Mark Bolgovich, sorry, Bolgovich, who uh, helped him do the, the book together. They're co-authors. Right. And so the actual majority of the work actually I got to do with Mark. And Peter was a little bit more behind the scenes. But definitely they very much are work as a team and there's a process of going back and forth where they determine you know what do we think that people would care about what are the stories that need to be told and you just go through a series of interviews and and I guess they decided the stories that seemed to resonate with them and would resonate with Canadians and that's actually kind of how I was selected I didn't ask I didn't put my name forward or anything like that 
they came to me and uh, I, I believe I'm the only person in Peel who's profiled in the book for something that I care deeply about. But the book is actually not about me as much as it's about the story of Osler and about fundraising for Osler and what we've been able to accomplish collectively for our community, our beautifully ethnically diverse and rapidly growing community. And it tells the story of the difference that it makes if the gift is $25 or if it's a million dollars. Uh, I really tried to focus the chapter on that more so than on me. Ken, at this point, I must say, you know, as much as I know you and I work um, closely with you without blurring the lines, I must say, the contribution that you make, maybe even you don't realize that. Healthcare is a very important uh, part in our communities. And uh, I'm so happy that yes, Peter Mansbridge, they chose you uh, in one of their chapters. And I'm sure I haven't read other stories, but I'll definitely read other stories as well. And uh, just for our audience, we'd like to tell you, please do go ahead, uh, pick up this book, How Canada Works, read these. These are very inspiring stories. And uh, obviously, there definitely comes a time in our life when we want to contribute to the community. But here is someone who's been doing this for 35 years. And the difference that uh, you've made, Ken, it's amazing. So tell us about your work. Um, yeah, there couldn't have been any better person than you in the region of Peel. Uh, yeah, we're also happy for that. Please tell us about your work as well that you do. I, I will, for sure. But maybe I can just go back a little bit a sure. moment ago. Something you said um, kind of really struck me, and I think it's really important, which is uh, in the story of your life, it's not a matter of if but when you'll need your local hospital, when you'll have a, a need in your family, you'll have a time when you, when you rely on health care locally. And for me, that was a teenager. Uh, I was the eldest, am the eldest of a large family, and suddenly my mother was sick. So one day your life's going one way, another way it goes, a, another day it goes a different way. And our local community hospital helped keep our family whole. And so I always think, I always thought, I'm like 18 years old, and I'm thinking, you know, in the story of your life, the majority of the care that you receive comes from your local community hospital, your little small hospital. We're fortunate to have big hospitals downtown and Osler by no means is small, but it's kind of local. And I thought if there's something that I could do to help give the people who work there, the facilities that they need, the equipment that they need, maybe the new building that they need to do the work that they need to do, what a tremendous contribution I could make and I had this idea even as a very young child I was fortunate to be the student council president at the time and I started from a very young age the same sort of journey that you just said so I just wanted to share a bit more personally why I do it I think it really is important and as you go through life you see so many people who have this health incident a loved one a child a parent a neighbor and uh, so what we do at Osler, and you're also a big part of that, you're on the Osler Foundation Board of Directors, is we help provide the equipment within the hospitals so that those who do that work, the physicians, the nurses, the incredible staff, there's almost 10,000 of them at Osler, have what they need to serve the community. That, that's kind of what we do. So the situation is a bit complicated in Ontario in that every hospital in Ontario, the government requires the community to have some skin in the game. So the community has to pay for the equipment inside hospitals. They have to pay for some of the cost to build the hospitals. That's kind of called the community share. So this is where hospital foundations come in. And every single hospital in Ontario has a foundation and they help work with and through the community to do that job. And sometimes, as you know, uh, it's a wheelchair. Uh, a family wants to replace a wheelchair and other times people are naming a wing or, or a whole part of the hospital through a larger gift. And that is incredibly important because it means that when someone comes to work or in their life if someone comes for care, what they need is there for them. That can be provided for in our best possible way. We cannot do that without the community. So I'm grateful for your kind words and I appreciate them. but. When we, when we built the first phase of Peel Memorial Hospital, there were 38,000 donors. Some were $25, some were kids doing a little something on their street, and others, as you know, were huge families and corporations who made it possible. So it takes a village, it's about community. I love our community, and I'm honored to do this work for Osler. 
Great. And uh, now what are the future plans? I'm sure we're building another hospital. So whatever details possibly you could share, share with the community. And at this point, uh, please listen to this part. I'm sure you're already listening very carefully. List this part very carefully. We all need to get together behind this uh, amazing thing that uh, William Ostler is trying to do. Please take us through. Yeah, thank you very much. And I think that uh, well, as Canada's fastest growing large municipality, Brampton always has needs, right? So in our particular case, there's a fairly immediate need for Brampton's second full hospital with a 24-7 emergency department, uh, 250 additional beds, uh, incredibly sophisticated programs to care for those in our community, for example, who are seniors or who may have some mental health struggles, which unfortunately so many do right now. So in order to make that happen, in order to take that from sort of a dream to a reality, we are working currently with the community to raise the money required for the portion of the community or local share to build the new uh, PM Memorial Hospital, which is a second phase of the project that is currently on site on Lynch Street, in, right in downtown Brampton. And that is a huge priority for us. It's gonna take the whole community coming together to get it done. That's what we did last time, we were successful. And we're back asking uh, for continued support, uh, asking that folks will be there for us so that we can be there for you. And at the same time, we do many other things all the time. As I said, with families, sometimes it might be a wheelchair. Uh, it might be something at the Etobicoke General Hospital or the Brampton Civic Hospital. So we have a lot of flexibility in terms of being able to do, maybe for your family, it's about cardiac care or it's about diabetes. Maybe it's about um, a newborn. And so there's lots of different ways that we work with our donors. And the big project right now is to build Brampton Second Hospital, PM Memorial. But at the same time, I'm happy to talk to anybody, as you know. Uh, we're grateful for all gifts. They all make a difference. And, but I, big, I think the big thing is, as you think about 2024 and what you hope your impact will be, I hope that you'll consider Osler as part of that story. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, at this point, I want to ask, what is your vision for healthcare in this uh, region of Peel and even in GTA or in Canada? I'm sure you have many insights for that. Well, I just think that, um, as I said, in my own life and in the story of anyone's life, you need healthcare. You need access to healthcare. I believe in healthcare equity. Like, I don't think it should depend on your postal code or what side of a certain, you know, community you live on. And the communities that we serve and where we live and where we raise our families um, haven't always had quite as much health care as other communities. There are historical and political reasons for that. And I would love to be and am part of an organization that is committed to addressing that. So that when people come to Canada, if they're newer to the country or maybe they're newer to the idea of hospital philanthropy, maybe where they came from you didn't give to your local hospital, that was something new to them. Or you've been here for many, many generations and you're used to sort of culturally giving to hospitals. Whatever it is, we're very grateful for your support. And I would love to be part of just expressing to people gratitude for that. And the reality for that, for me, is PM Memorial, phase one, the PM Memorial Integrated Health and Wellness Center, didn't exist until the community did what we've been talking about for the first phase of PM Memorial. It was empty ground. And then we built that hospital. And then unfortunately, four years later, the pandemic hit. And we were able to care for everybody as well as we did because we had a building that the community had provided for our nurses and our doctors and all, all the people who do the work inside the hospital. That makes me feel pretty good. And even in those scarier days of the pandemic, I was in the hospital every single day. I thought together with the community and people like the city of Brampton who showed a lot of leadership in building that project, we got that done. And we were able to sort of hold the line thanks to people coming together, people like you and other community leaders, and my team, of course, supporting the amazing people who work at Osler every day. So that, that to me is my vision. Great, and uh, as you were mentioning earlier as well, yes, I do uh, sit on the board and it's uh, an honor, privilege, working alongside you, learning so many things, how dedicated all of you are. You know, the just uh, the other day I was uh, talking talking to Raj Narula. Of course, it's great to see him. You know, so much dedication, uh, and, and he's just so focused on supporting. Uh, you know, the foundation. 
Absolutely, and I think that's because in the story of his life, he's needed the hospitals. And then there's others, you know, our friend Supdeep Kong and Armour Insurance and so many who have come forward for us. It's, it's very inspiring. I feel very humbled by it to get to serve people like you and Raj and Supdeep and Dr. Gujweet Bajwa and so many others. Uh, it's, it's an honor to do the kind of work that I do and I have tremendous belief that we're gonna continue to have the impact that we need to have because one thing about hospitals, you never lack customers, right? You always have people every single day yeah. who need you and we can be there for them because the community has been there for us and that's yeah. an incredible thing. Yeah, I'll thank Sukhdeep uh, for her for introducing me right. to the foundation. Thank you so much. And of course, Dr. Bajwa, I was talking to him the other day as well. Amazing uh, person, very, very uh, dedicated. Before I uh, let you go, I once again want uh, to ask you that what sort of support you need from the community, 35 years, and uh, how Canada works. You're a perfect <laughs> example of how Canada works, how because of your hard work. Actually, it's not just working, as it's mentioned here as well, how it's thriving. It's so successful, why we are here. There is a reason we are here. Uh, and um, before I let you go, what, do you, what is the support that you need from the community? And how, what are the challenges you're facing? So I would say that uh, what makes the work that we do work is that we do it together. And that each in their own way have a contribution. And, I, and I, as you know, right, I work with I, I, the mayor introduced me to a group from the Amadea community and they did a run for us and raised some money through their youth programs. Okay. And another time I'm dealing with a family who is sort of wanting to recognize one of their parents back home by putting a plaque up in the hospital. And, and in, in amounts large and small, we make a huge impact, a huge contribution. And building the new tower, as you can imagine, at Peel Memorial is a massively expensive project. So we're going to need people to step forward in in an unprecedented way, an unprecedented level. So that's both the excitement, but it's also the challenge because people have a lot going on and for some people, the economy is a bit concerning right now. So I guess just letting people know that it's not as much even about the amount, but about that you do your part is a really important thing to me. And I've worked with so, so many people where it started pretty modest and then they build on that over time and they leave this legacy of healthcare in Brampton and beyond. And I think that is a spectacular thing to do. I know I'm repeating myself a bit, I apologize, but I'm very excited, though I'm a little nervous as well <laughs> about the size of the project we're yeah. taking on together. And, uh, but to collect, to, to get together collectively as a community, we'll get it done. We always find a way, we seem to find a way. Our, our communities are, um, we know how to get things done and we're, we're not strangers to adversity or difficulty. And that, that sort of inspires me more. That doesn't discourage me at all. That actually inspires me more. Yeah, at the end of this uh, interview, you know, I'm sure we'll have uh, many more to come. But uh, let me tell you, I share similar feelings. I, I still remember when I came to your office and uh, we were overlooking the place. <laughs> I'm very excited that uh, the new hospital is going to be built. Right. Um, and yeah, a bit of nervousness as well because it's a huge project. But uh, you know, the excitement certainly uh, yeah. you know, overpowers everything else because it's, uh, the, the bottom line is that it's going to serve millions and millions of people, many generations to come here. Right. We'll all take pride in the new facility that is being built. And I'll certainly request all of you, let's be part of this uh, uh, you know, historic thing that is being built here, right here, here in Brampton, right here in the region of Peel, and I'm sure it's going to serve many, many people. Ken, pleasure talking to you. Pleasure talking to you as well. Thank and you. Uh, one line which will stick with me, you were there throughout this interview. Of course, there are many inspiring things today. You were there at your job, you said that earlier in the interview, every day during the pandemic. Wow, yeah. that is amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ken. You're welcome. And, I look uh, forward to being back. Sure, look forward, looking forward. Once again, we'll leave you with, the, uh, with this book, How Canada Works. Uh, do check out on this book, and especially don't forget to read the chapter where Ken <laughs> is featured. Thank you so much for joining us today. That's all that we have. Hi, this is Priyanka Chopra, and you are watching Channel Y. The biggest South Asian media group, Y Media. Y Media. Y Media. 
Sky Media Group, established in 2001, is a media company with a 360 degree approach in reaching our audience over five platforms television, radio, newspaper, online news portal, and mobile app. Why Media has newspaper, midweek, radio, South Asian Pop. Hi, I'm Amitabh Bachchan, and you're listening to South Asian Pop. Hi, this is Amir Khan, and you're listening to South Asian Pop. All English, 24-7, television network, and Y Media Plus. You are watching Channel Y. Channel Y. Prime Minister, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be back. Y Media is the official media partner for TIFF 2022. It's so exciting to be here. Exclusive show all about the Toronto International Auto Show. So Cam's going to tell us more about uh, the amazing vehicle behind us right now. You can see the Devel 16. Hi, I'm Ria Khan, and on behalf of Y Media, welcome to Channel Y. One Y Media Group welcomes you to Channel Y once again. Channel Y ke entertainment special sure. made jahan. SouthAsianDaily.com, the biggest South Asian media group. Why media? Ah!